thing. I have to try this again. <laughs> I do, I feel like, due to not emotionally or mentally, but I got a cold or something. I don't know what it is. I was hoping it's not COVID again because, whew, that almost killed me last time. But I guess if you get it once, you ain't going to die again, right? <coughs> Man, I'm like resilient. What am I, a cockroach? Anyway, so uh, we're in John chapter 11 and verse 1. It says, uh, now a certain man was sick named, hmm? now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, a town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. And it tells you who she is, which is kind of cool. You know, if you don't know the story, um, she did, you know, and she wiped his feet with her hair, you know. And that's why I love that scripture that says, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Therefore his sister said unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. So they're making a plea to Jesus, if you will, a prayer, if you will. They're sending for him. And that's the thing about it. You know, um, there isn't anyone in here who went to him and didn't get what they asked for. That's the way it is. I mean, honestly, that's the way it is. Um, there wasn't anyone, there wasn't anyone that, that, uh, went to him and didn't get healing, that didn't get comfort, but, and, it, and it was predominantly healing. I mean, it was a lot of healing, you know, people dead, people blind, people deaf, people, lepers, uh, just all kinds of diseases and sicknesses. And they went to him, and he answered them, you know, which, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because I was like, man, Lord, why do you let us go through this stuff? Why do you let us, you know, I mean, a parent, if they had the ability, this is the way I see it, I look at it anyway, if a parent had the ability to not let their kids go through anything, they would use that ability. They would use that, you know, power to not have that happen. You know, like my daughter, you know, my oldest, she's the, which I, I see in the building. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> she's on her own. My son will be that way here. July he'll be on his own. But I worried about her while while she was out there. I was like, "Oh man!" But I pray for her. You know, I pray for her, and, and and tragedy can happen at any given time. You know, um, I look at my life. You know, I look at my life, and I think when I and, I and it's so crazy how different you think. You know how, and I know people say that. Don't blame your parents. They say that. Quit blaming your parents. But I'm going to tell you something. You know, I'm going to tell you something. Whatever influences you have, and this is what's sad about it, because a lot of people, you know, they're doing the same thing to their kids. That's why they say don't blame their parents. And that's the truth. You know, it may not be the extent of abuse, but it's just another form of abuse because you give kids all they want. That's a form of abuse. You feed kids till they're big and fat and getting uh, um, um Diabetes, that's a form of abuse. You know, I mean, honestly, that's the truth. Anyway, um, conditioning, conditioning, okay? When you when you grow up in something and, and, and you're, you're made to, you know, you're, you're, you're rooted in it to think a certain way, you know, who did that to you? You didn't do it yourself. No one comes out of the womb and says, you know what, I want to be a criminal. <laughs> no one comes out of the womb and says, you know, i like my life to go to hell. I want to get on drugs. I want to get on, I want to destroy myself. Nobody does that. And if you do, you found your destiny. It's a quick destiny and you'll be dead or in jail. So you're awesome. But nobody does that. Nobody wants to be in that state of mind, in that state of, you know. So when you're conditioned and you're nurtured in that way, you know, 
Um, you have to be unconditioned, you know? And a lot of times there's supposed helps out there, but they're really not helps. They're really not, you know? They're really not. Like I, like I shared with you before, you know, when we were living here, someone sicked, I'll say it like that, sicked a counselor on our family um, over in White Shield. And I knew who it was. That's what they do around here. Well, it's not everybody. But they said we were neglecting our kids. Our kids didn't have food. We were abusing them. That's what they said. So the lady shows up, you know, under friendly pretenses, you know, acting like she's a homie. She shows up to the house, comes in, you know, how are your kids doing? Blah, blah. And then she walks into place, and it was in a, it was in a uh, trailer court. It was in a, I call them cracker boxes, those mobile homes, the single wide. And she walks in, she goes, oh, my God, it's warm in here. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what do you think, I'll have my kids freezing? <laughs> what are you, nuts? And I knew how to insulate. I knew how to make it warm. So she comes in and she goes in our fridge. Well, you got lots of food. Well, yeah. Got a freezer full of food, got a fridge. What are you talking about? Well, someone reported you guys. Huh. Interesting. So this lady had been from the area we were from. Well, my wife was from. I was from more Western. But she invited us over to her home. And the accusations that were made against us, which were false, here they ended up being true in her own home life. <laughs> so here's a person who has a degree. Here's a person who is hired for that. And her condition is worse than ours, the one she was sent to investigate. And that's what goes on today. That's exactly what happens today. You know, And so here, um, growing up a certain way, you know, growing up a certain aspect. And so here, um, when it says here, there was a man who had been sick. See, and that's the condition of the world. This representation of this story in John chapter 11 is a representation of the entire world. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. And like I said, a lot of stuff you're not going to agree with that I share. But check it out sometime. Just just check it out. Anyway. And so when you're conditioned, you have to be unconditioned. Okay. I have to be. Have to be unconditioned. You know. And I worry about, like I said, I worry about my daughter. I worry about her. Worried. But she's smart. She takes an Uber to work and from work. To work and from work. Which was, I was like, oh, cool, cool. And of course I pray for them. I pray for my kids to be safe. I pray for them to be okay, that they don't break an arm, that they don't slit themselves open and get stitches and all that, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, I remember my mom used to pray for us concerning that. And so they sent for Jesus. You know, they're in prayer, if you will. And they make a request to him. And like I said, most of the people that got, that came to Jesus, got exactly what they wanted. They got exactly what they asked for. They got exactly what they wanted from him. To a T. And he whom you love is sick. The one you love, the one you care about. So, so Okay. If you go with the pattern of Jesus, watch this. If you go with the pattern of Jesus, of him introducing himself to the earth, of him starting his ministry at 30, chances are you're going to get what you asked for because that's been his pattern. I mean, everybody. There isn't anybody that didn't get what they asked for. There isn't anybody that didn't get a healing. There was stories of 
people that would come to him and they would say, hey, there's someone sick at my home. You know, go ahead and just say the word and they'll be healed. Just say it, you know, and he would. He'd say it. They get back. And then they asked, when did they get healed? Well, at this time. And it was the time that they asked him and he said, go ahead, they're healed. <laughs> Stuff like that over and over again. So many. And, and, and see, that's what's crazy. That's what blows my mind. It blows my mind because there's a lot of religions that say, well, miracles don't happen today. Miracles don't happen today, which is fine. You know, that's fine. That's great. You want to believe that? Believe that. Anyway, um, I remember I was uh, doing a Bible study with a gentleman here in the jail, Tony Mandan. He'd go in there with his wife, Althea. I think that, man, I think that was her name. And then uh, a Lutheran minister, you know. And so we'd go in there and we'd do Bible studies. And here's what he said, which was a very profound statement, which means he'd never read the Bible. But here's what he said. He said, the miracles died with the apostles. That's what he said. And here's what I shared. I said, well, you know, you go to doctors to have them fix you, hoping they perform a miracle. That's the truth. When you go to a doctor, there, there's something wrong, right? I mean, really. When you go to a doctor, that means your health is in question. Your, um, your, um, you know, something's wrong. You want him to fix you. And so they look at you. They say this. They say that because of the pattern of the of the thing. You know, and a lot of them, it's like the glasses the guy wants to sell me. You know, he puts these on, he puts that on to make more money off me. And really, I don't need that. I, I got I got some readers here from Walmart for 10 bucks. I got some ones I can see further away. You know, I just got to switch them all the time. But hell, you know, and it only cost me $15. And he wants to sell me a set of glasses for $165. And that was pretty much for his pocket. That's the truth. Pathetic. But that's what they do. And I'm going to tell you that. When you walk into a hospital, when you walk into a clinic, you're a dollar sign. <laughs> that's the truth. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. To get as much off you as they can. That's the truth. The ones who really make the money are the dang colleges and the universities. You see how much they charge for a book? $200 sometimes, and that's every student in there. Come on, man, for a book? Anyway, anyway, getting back to this. So when they sent for Jesus, let me see, let me read it again. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sister said unto him, saying, Lord, he whom thou lovest is sick. The one you love is sick. He's sick. Um, <coughs> he whom you love is sick. So when they tell Jesus this, they totally expect him to return and heal him. Okay? That's what they expect. Because, for one, you love him. Right? And he, and strangers, stranger would come up to Jesus and say, I need this. And of course, they'd get what they want. Strangers. And, and whatever they requested, whatever they wanted, they got. And so these ladies being around him a lot, I mean, she's, Mary is wiping his feet with her hair after she anoints his feet, you know. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death. And see, I know I've heard people say this, and it's so true. They said, I would rather be dead than suffer with cancer. Even my mom told me that. She goes, if I'm ever incapacitated, just let me go. Don't leave me there like a vegetable. And I understand what she's saying. I never understood it before. You know, it's funny because when you're starting out in life, 
I'm talking about being uh, when you're starting out, you know, life is everything. I mean, don't get me wrong. Even through your life, life is everything. But you start seeing the limitations, which were there the whole time. The limitations have always been there. We just don't see them because of our youth. You know, I can do anything, <laughs> which is true. But as we start nearing that, what do they call it? The autumn or the, the winter, <laughs> whatever they call it. You know, you start looking at stuff and going, man, this is a little different. This is a little bit different, you know. And so here, what Jesus is saying when he said, this is not unto death. In other words, it's got nothing to do with death, folks. That's what that's saying. It's not about death. You know what I mean? It's not. At all. You know what's funny is? Anyway, anyway. And it's not. It has. Jeez, oh, how do I say this? Spiritually speaking, you can pray about this, but spiritually speaking, not unto death means this. You're already dead. Hello. Hello. It's over for you. It's done. <laughs> Serious. You know, and, that, and that's the saddest part about folks is they are dead while they're living. Oh, that's so bad. That's so sad. I, I can't put it any more plain than that. It's sad how people are dead while they're alive. You know, honestly, same old dang conversation, same old junk, same old baloney, same like a hamster wheel. You know, you're not going anywhere. It's not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. And he said that too with the man born blind. You know, he said the same thing with the man born blind in chapter 9. You know, but the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And he loves us all. Okay. He loves us all. When he had therefore, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. So he didn't leave immediately. He didn't send a word. He didn't do any of that. He stayed exactly where he was at. You can imagine the people on the other end. Well, where is he? We sent for him. We asked him to come. We told him the one he loves is sick. Where is he? So imagine that. And I'm, I'm talking not just two days, because we think of two days. Well, it's already gone. No, no, no. This is their brother. This is, in other words, okay, watch. The conversation going on with them on the other end. Not Jesus, but their end. Oh, don't worry. We sent for Jesus. You're good. Okay? He'll be here soon. We sent for him. We told him you were sick. We know he loves you. You're good. Don't worry. Okay? No showing up yet. Huh? You know, the time go by. <coughs> Waiting for him. Well, what the heck? You know, night comes, day comes. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's got to be here. He's got, don't worry, don't worry. I know all of you getting worse and worse and worse. Imagine that. The, the, the time goes by and Jesus stays where he's at. Did not move, did not head over there, did not, um, you know. Then after this, he saith to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of the world. But if, an, if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These signs, well, excuse me, these, thing, these things said he, 
And after that, he saith unto his unto them. Excuse me a moment. <laughs> Sorry. Yep, told you I got a cold. Okay. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. They said, The disciple, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent. Jesus that can make anything happen. Jesus that raises the dead. Jesus that does all these things does not show up. So on their end. Oh, crap. He's dead. Huh. And Jesus never came. Most of the deaths that took place before Lazarus, they were on their way to the procession. The person just had died, if you read the Bible. Those people were dead. Loved ones are going to sit there and check everything they can to make sure they're not dead because they don't want them to die. See? And so, imagine that on their end. And you know right away there's those guys there. Oh, well, where is he at? Where is he? Mr. Almighty, Mr. I can do anything, mister. I can raise the dead. Where is he at? Not here. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us go, and we may die with him, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had laid in the grave, in the grave four days already. There's a saying in the Mexican realm. After three days, the body starts to stink, <laughs> meaning your welcome has been outridden. Get out of my house. <laughs> so it's four days. Now, Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs. And many of the Jews came to Mar Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Now watch the conversation she poses. Watch the what she shares. Watch. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. You made a mistake, God. You, and see, that that's our thing, folks. That's our thing. That's our thing as limited as we are. We function in the temporary. We function in the limited. We function, you know, because that's what we've been shown all our lives. And that's the truth. We function in the limitedness of what's around us. And that's sad. You know, that is sad. I hate to say it, but it is sad. <laughs> If you would have been here. Because most people will go and just keep face, keep, um, keep, hello, sis. Most people will go through and save face, okay? Because, again, now, now I'm going to share with you, and I'll share this with you, okay, by God's grace. Most of the people that had, that Jesus raised from the dead, they were on their way to the cemetery or they just died. So it wasn't that long. This is the, this is the, um, this is the, this is the um, setting where it's past the due date, where it's past what it, you know, what it was. And so, you know, 
Jesus shows up finally. This is John chapter 11, if you want to check it out. We're in John chapter 11, when, when Lazarus is sick. It's past the due date, you know, because, because they tell Jesus, your friend is sick, you know, your friend is sick. He needs your help. He needs you to, uh, he needs you to uh, help him, you know, and Jesus doesn't move. He does not move at all. He doesn't set out over there, you know, and he tells his disciples, I'm glad I wasn't there. <laughs> That's crazy. Dude, he died. He's dead. What do you mean you're glad you wasn't there? But see, he's taken it to an arena that deals with everything that's going on. Now, let me show you what I mean. Let me show you what I mean. It's funny how we let things go by. We let things slide. We let things kind of go past us until we face a brick wall. Then we start thinking a little different. Once we hit a brick wall, we go, wait a minute. Let me rethink myself. Let me really analyze what's going on here. Let me see what's really happening here. You know what I mean? And of course, then we get back into our our routine, our usual routine. We go back into our routine. Well, I got to do this, and I got to, and we live up here in the way we want it to be. We live up here in the way we hope it to be. We live up here in the way we think it should be, rather than going around and going, "Wait a minute, what's going on here? What's happening here?" You know, because we were hope was squeezed out of us. Because we tried before, and we tried before, and it failed, and we tried again, and it failed, and we tried again, and it failed. Well, you have to really look. What is it are you trying to do? You know? What is it that you're really trying to get accomplished? What is it? Because there's really, and it's true, there's nothing you can't do. But you see, if you're trying to do 10 different tasks at once, 10 different things, None of them are going to get done. Hello? Honestly, if you're trying to do 10 different things at once, none of them are going to get done. And all you're going to do is tire yourself out. That's all you're going to do. How about you pick one? Pick one of them and get that darn thing accomplished, whatever it might be. Try that out. You know what I'm saying? Quit trying to throw stuff in the wishy well, hoping it comes to pass, because it's not going to. Okay? Life is not about wishes, folks. Life is not about dreams. I'm not saying don't dream. I'm not saying don't wish. But that's not what life is about. Taking action. Okay? Actually, initially, taking action. All right? Well, Jesus, when they tell him his fault, do something. You know? Make something happen. That's what we're told. That's whether it be the belief of God, whether it belief, the belief, any belief or act, you know, watch this. I work in a kitchen. I burnt myself. I burnt myself. Uh, I don't know if you can see it right there. I'll show it to you right there. Okay. Now, I'm not shocked that I, and I thank God it doesn't hurt today. I'm not shocked that I burnt myself. I work in a stinking kitchen. There's hot ovens. There's hot stuff all around. Okay. What had happened was, as I was getting stuff out of the stove, the doors are like this. One of them, and I can't see on this side of my head. One of them kind of closed. And when I reached in, I, I hit that door with my arm. And I pulled away real fast. Thank God it didn't burn heavily. But chances are, working in the kitchen, I'm going to burn myself. Chances are, working in the kitchen, I'm going to cut myself. Okay? I minimize those chances by doing things, you know, paying attention, which I will from now on. <laughs> paying attention, taking my time. You know what I mean? And, you know, when I cut, take my time. You know I mean, I got I to gotta be fast. I am pretty fast on the night. But anyway... 
chances are those things are going to happen. You know? So things are going to happen on this earth. That's just the way it is. You know? I get shocked when people say, oh, my car payment's coming up. Well, you put down on it. They're going to put you in a spending thing. You're going to spend money on a car. Oh, my tire's going to be changed. Well, you ride them on the road. They're going to, you're going to have to change them. Stuff like that. You know, my rent's coming up. Well, you, you rented a place. I'm grateful that I don't have to pay rent where I'm at right now. <laughs> really grateful. You know, busted my tail here, but hey, why not? Anyway. So Martha tells Jesus, if you would have been here. And that's the conversation that's going around. See? That's the conversation that's happening. That's the conversation that is, you know, happening all around. I know a lady, a lady, when I first met her, she told me, okay, how come God hasn't blessed me? I said, what do you mean? Well, God's supposed to bless us. If we believe in him, he blesses us. I make this much money every year and I'm broke. I said, oh. Well, let's find out where your money's going. Well, I bought my daughter a car, and I bought my son a car, and I bought my other daughter a car. Oh, well, how old are they? Well, this one's 24, and this one's, are they all over 18? Well, yeah. Then why the hell are you buying them cars? They're adults. Let them buy their own cars. Or if you are buying them cars, don't complain when you don't have no money. And she, and she called me a straight-up curse names. You know? Okay, so she wastes what she earns. I'm not ready right now, thank God. I want to try, but I can't, and I shouldn't. You, you see what I'm saying? And that's where a lot of things stem from. That's where a lot of our troubles come from, okay? And the best way to stop that is to stop that, all right? Honestly, you know? Because God's with you. Yes, God is with you. There's no question. He shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. You know, I'm telling you, while I'm in that kitchen, I hate it. I hate it. I'll tell you why I hate it. I'm appreciative of the job. I'm appreciative that I can do the work. I'm appreciative that I am able to handle the work. I am so appreciative of that. Okay. I really, really, really am. The thing is that I hurt in my knees. I hurt in my back. My feet hurt. I did that for me. And all the money was mine. Now I'm doing it for someone else. And they get most of the money. That's why I hate it. You know, I'm running around going, man, I did this for me. And I'm hoping God makes a way for me to bring my taco truck over here. I'm hoping I'm praying about it. I don't want to move on my own. I moved on my own a lot, and things got worse. So I'm not moving on my own. I'm waiting on him. And it's hard. It's really, really hard. Anyway. And so here, the lady blames, you know, this and that, when in fact, she put herself in the hole, you know? Now, again, don't be upset if you decide to do something and lose everything. Well, that's on you. I'm sorry. That's the way it is. Reminds me of Martha and Mary, the same people that we're reading about in John chapter 11 when she went in the kitchen and started cooking. You know, people were invited. Jesus. She gets upset because her sister sat down at Jesus' feet to listen to his word. And she gets mad. And she tells Jesus, don't you care? My sister had left me to serve alone. Tell her to help me. And Jesus tells her straight up, you are careful and troubled about many things. You are careful and troubled about many things. You're careful and troubled about many things. Not just this, a lot of stuff. See, because if she really knew Jesus, uh, Lord, if you had been here, Lord, if you had been here, My brother had not died. And that's the conversation that's going around. That's the conversation that's happening with it. That's the 
you know, the aura, if you will. Because that's what people will do. I'm telling you right now, people will not encourage you. They'll destroy you. That's the truth. Because they can't do it. They don't want you doing it because then they look like a super failure. Now, my kids, I'm going to tell you this. My kids. Oh, my God. This is so heartwarming to me and touching. But my kids, they were at the park down the road from our house. And they found some rocks. And they were shiny. They came to me and they said, Dad, we found some diamond rocks. I said, awesome. Can we sell them? Sure. Go sell them. Which they didn't realize because they're kids that they, somebody could just go down to the park and get it themselves. Anyway, they were actually selling the diamond rocks for $150,000. Really? They had a sign. Excuse me a moment. I'll be right back. Give me a second. So my kids go, and they weren't selling. They were out there all day, out there all day. I didn't stop them. I let them do it. By all means, you want to sell diamond rocks, sell diamond rocks. And they said, Dad, we're going to reduce the price. I said, okay. So they reduced it from 150000 to 10000 I said, awesome. And... They come running in. They're excited. I said, whoa, what happened? Oh, someone bought some rocks of us for $10. I was like, oh, awesome. The lady next door told me, she goes, oh, my God, your kids are so cute. They were out there all day, and I thought, I got to give them something. So I bought a couple of rocks off them. <laughs> I didn't quell. You know, my, my logical adult thinking would have said, oh, my God, you guys, uh, no. See? By all means, do it. By all means, go ahead and do whatever it is you want to do. Do it to your heart's fullest extent and desire. Another one of my daughters, the oldest one, she's running for president in seventh grade. I believe it was seventh grade. Yeah, seventh grade. So she's running for president of her class. And she says, she comes home. She's a little down, and I, you know, I always watch for stuff. I always do. I always look for stuff. That's you got to be attentive. You really, really got to be attentive to what's around you. You do. You have to be. You know. And so I seen she was a little bit down, and I said, "What's going on?" And she says, "Well, Dad, I don't think I want to make president." I, said, I didn't say, "Well, you're a beautiful girl," you know all that. I didn't have to say that. I said, "You're absolutely right. Only popular, pretty girls." Get the presidency. Change that rule. Change it. If you believe that that's the way it is and you want to be president, change the rule. So her mother jumped in and she said, well, write a good speech. And I told her, yeah, write a speech. And when you write the speech, look everybody in the eye and let them know you're serious about what you're saying. Take initiative. And then her mom helped her found the saying, and she wrote it. I believe it was from General MacArthur. I can't remember. So she went with that speech. She wrote the speech herself. We didn't write it for her. We could have, but we didn't. She wrote the speech. She wrote the saying. She was she she became president. 
Not only did she become president, she was president all the way through her entire school years. I'm not a positive person. I'm going to tell you that right now. I am not a positive person. People think that. I am not a positive person. I do not believe in positivity, folks. I don't. At all. The word of God is not positivity. The word of God is truth. Overrides possibilities. Pos positivity. Excuse me. Positivity. The problem with positivity is it has to be built up to reach its full potential. Once it loses any of it, it's done. It's like a battery. Right? You got to charge it. But it starts declining. Once it says 100%, it starts declining. That's positivity, folks. Positive, negative, right? Right? Batteries. Truth isn't based on what people feel, what people think, the majority. Truth is truth. The entire world could say God does not exist. He would not disappear. You get what I'm saying? Truth overrides everything. It doesn't matter what it is. So you got a scenario here where as they're talking, that's why I say that, people will always tear you down. That's the way it is. And so this lady says to him, if you would have been here, God, Almighty, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Because that's the conversation that's going around. Ah, where's he at? Ah, he didn't do what he said he was going to do. Ah, guess he ain't as great as he thought he was. Hello. But I know. Then she says this. But I know. Even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Now, she says that, again, because people want to save face whenever they do stuff. They do. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know. There she goes with I know again. Twice, I know. You ever had those folks that you're trying to show them something? I know. All right, then go with it. <laughs> I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. See? And that's how most people live their lives. The next paycheck, the next income tax return, the next time I get a, a, a big amount of money, I'm going to do this. The next time, the next time this happens, and that, hello. Hello. You know? Why not right now? And I know you could be in a scenario or a setting that is just so messed up, that is just so broken, that is just so, you know. And that's what's sad about it. You know, that's what's so sad about it. She's reciting the religious ideas that were told. Oh, I know he will. In the resurrection. At the last day. You know? And that's what everybody's waiting for. Instead of realizing right now, that done already took place. I'm not saying the resurrection is past. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying this. If you are truly born again, I'll say it straight up. You have been raised from the dead. And that's the truth. If you truly are born again and you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you have been raised from the dead. Hello. Hello. I mean, it's hard. I ain't going to deny. It is hard. It is hell. I ain't going to deny that.
Jesus said unto her, watch this, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. See, that's the promise I go by, folks. That's the promise I believe in. Believest thou this? Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. She said unto him, Yes, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way, called her sister secretly, saying, The master is come and calleth for thee. And as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Look at that. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. So it's past the due date. They had the procession. They had the mourning. You know the you know the ritual of the of the of the of the funeral. <laughs> it's like a damn event. What the hell is wrong with people? You know? Sad. And it's more for their benefit than the people that went on. Hello. I know that's rough, but it's the truth. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not. See the conversation now? Again, that same old crappy conversation of you weren't here if you'd have been here. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Let me read that again. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. See, and that's the thing about it, folks. That's the thing about it. You might think, or we might think, oh, he's crying because the people are crying. And Let me tell you something. What we're reading here is the entire condition of man. That's our condition. That's our whole setup. That's our whole... Um, scenario that's our whole that is us what is being shared right now is in fact us in our state see little do we know about that and he said where have you laid him they said unto him lord come and see jesus wept and it's not to say lazarus mary martha he loved them it's not to no 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 that's the entire condition because it wasn't just him dead there was many, many graves. Many, I mean, think about it. We always think of how many people are on the earth. Well, how many people have already left the earth? Hello? It's funny because they say there's not enough room on here, but I don't see anybody living on a cemetery, and those are people. And that's from day one. I, I was shocked the other day because I told this girl, I said, yeah, America's only let's see, 8, 17, 87, 18, 19, 87, uh, 200 and something years old. She didn't believe me. I said, yeah, America is only 200 and something years old. She goes, no way. I said, yes. I don't believe it. I said, okay, look it up. She looked it up. Oh, my God. How did she not know that? Now, I know, because the Indians have already been here a long time, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, humans have been on the earth for a long time. Scratch all that stuff. So what's happening is with Jesus is that's the entire the entirety of the human condition. That's the entirety. That's the whole of the human condition. Okay. We're all destined for the grave. We're done. We're sick. We're broken. You know? And it's funny because we cry for those and yet we're beating the same fate. Maybe not how they did. 
<clears throat> but initially the same fate. This is the Jews. Behold how he loved him. Getting, getting sneezy here. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Hello? See? See that? Jesus never again groaning in himself come into the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. So they went through the whole procession. They went through the whole scenario. They went through everything. Jesus said, take you away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he has been dead four days. Hello. Hello. She just said, I know, I know. And now she's saying, Well, Jesus said to her, Said I not unto thee that thou dost believe, thou wouldest believe thou shouldest see the glory of God? And I know we think that the belief makes God do stuff. Uh -uh. God's already doing stuff. The belief lets you see what he's already doing. Big difference. Hello. See? There's people that it's right in front of them and they can't see it because they're stuck in stubbornness, whatever else they're in. It's right in front of them and they can't see it. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I know that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said to him, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them the things which Jesus had done. See how bad evil is? Then gathered the chief priests and Pharisees the council and said, What do we do? What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. Look at that, coming out of their own lips. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away our both our place and nation. Hello. First, our place, thinking of themselves. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest, that same year said unto them, you know nothing at all, nor consider it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Hello? He had nothing to do with what was being said. And not for that nation only, but all that also he should gather together for one, in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forward, they took counsel together to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence into a country near to the wilderness into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple. What think you that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it that they might take him. Now notice, they couldn't take him themselves. See? And that's that. They even talked about killing Lazarus because Lazarus actually was part of that thing that he was doing where he I'm going to clear my nose out real quick I hope you don't mind where he was actually a what you call it to how you know miracles occur poster child being raised from the dead so they spake about killing him again. We got to kill him because he's a reminder that Jesus can raise the... Oh, my God. You know?
Oh, we're almost there. Let's do it. We'll read 12 too. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with them. Notice, she's serving again, but she's not complaining this time. Then took Mary a pound of ointment for Spigner, very costly, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the order of the ointment. Now, remember, I was telling you before, and like I said, you might not agree, but it's the truth. When it says the thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and destroy, it's not talking about Satan. It's talking about the son of perdition. And it's going to show you right here how it's talking about Lazarus, or excuse me, Judas, the son of perdition. Then saying one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor. And that's the truth. Not that he cared for the poor. But because he was a thief. And had the bag and bear what was put therein. See? He's the thief. And he's the son of perdition. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. See? But the chief priests consulted that they might put also Lazarus, because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. On the next day, very much, the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon as it is written, fear not, daughter of Sion. Behold, thy king cometh, sitting on the ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that had these things were written, that these things were written of him, and that he had done these things unto him, that they had done these things unto him. The people therefore that was with him, when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees Therefore said among themselves, perceive you how you prevail nothing? Behold, the world is gone after him. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and Andrew, again Andrew, and tell, Philip telleth, tells Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily I say, verily, verily I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it bideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour, but for this came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Hey, what's up? Now judgment will come. Now, uh, the people therefore that stood by heard it and said, It thundered. Others said, An angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice cometh not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, this, this he said signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth ever, and how sayest thou the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? 
Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk you while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, he had blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of it. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisee, they did not confess him, lest he should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Hello. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. He that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. See, And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, and whosoever believeth on me shall not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I am not come, I am come not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him, the words that I have spoken. The same shall judge him at the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. All right, we're in chapter 13 now. All right. Well, God bless. Ah, I'm really sick. <laughs> My nose is all stuffy. Anyway, we'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.